Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and thank you very much for joining me for another video. So today's video is going to be a super chilled one and basically just going to be talking through some tips and tricks on shopping for secondhand items on eBay and Depop. I've got a list here, a very scruffy list of just like some key points that I want to talk through. I was going to kind of label them like, I don't know, like 10 tips and tricks or whatever, but I feel as though once I start talking about the first thing, it will then lead on to the next thing and lead on to various different things that I want to talk about. So I'm not really going to do it like specifically like tip one, tip two, tip three. I'm just going to kind of talk through what I've jotted down and yeah, hopefully just give you some tips and tricks to make shopping secondhand items online a bit easier. So I do just want to say I am in no way any kind of like professional at shopping second hand. Um, it's just something that I've been enjoying recently and just some things I've kind of noticed that have helped me. And I know a lot of you on Instagram have said that you've always been unsure with sec shopping at second hand just because you kind of worry with like trust issues and you're just not really sure what to look for and how to search for things. Um, so yeah, I thought I would just do this video. So I thought I would just quickly start off with two items that I've purchased recently second hand. I was going to wait to do this video until I had like a lot more items to show you, but I thought I would get this up because I know a lot of you are quite interested in it. So item number one, is this really nice bike jacket from Topshop, but I got it on eBay. I will pop a picture here on the screen of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like on. So this is the first item that I've purchased in quite a long time that was second hand. Because recently I've kind of got a bit of a collection of pretty summer dresses and obviously the weather hasn't been great. I really wanted to style them up with a bike jacket. I looked everywhere online, but obviously because we're kind of in the spring and summer, Bike jackets aren't really that easy to get your hands on and if you can get your hands on them then they are quite pricey and given that we are in spring and summer I then didn't want to spend loads of money on it although I know it's a classic piece but a biker jacket isn't really something that I've had that many of in the past and I just wasn't really too sure on how much I'm going to wear it and whether it's going to work with my kind of clothes or not. So I thought a cheaper secondhand alternative would work really well. As I said, I got this jacket off Depop and I'm just checking the listing now just so I can confirm the pricing. So I paid £32 for this and the lovely lady included delivery in that price. Um, so I was really, really happy with the kind of pricing of it. So I will pop the pictures on the screen of the listing. So as you can see, all of the pictures here, they are very clear. She's got pictures from the front. She's also got pictures at the back and you can see the product in detail and you definitely know what you're going to get. So I was really confident in this seller. I've done my research on her feedback and things and I was really happy to go ahead with the deal. Then the biker jacket arrived and I absolutely loved it and I've pretty much worn it not every day but a lot since receiving it and then the second item that i have to show you is this tommy hilfiger jumper again i will pop a couple of pictures here on the screen of me wearing it so you can see so i actually grabbed this in an extra large and i got this off ebay so as you can see i will pop the pictures again on the screen of this item so the lovely lady i actually spoke to her quite a bit and you can see here that she's uploaded a picture of the front she's uploaded a picture of the tommy hilfiger logo which is obviously great for checking that it's um authentic and then she's also linked she's also took a picture of the size here as well although there wasn't a picture of the back i was pretty confident that it was going to be in good condition she told me it had only been worn twice um, and yeah, it was pretty, basically immaculate. So I actually paid £23.70 for the jumper and that included first class delivery. So again, I was really, really happy with that deal. Having researched the jumper, I know that they kind of retail at around £80. So I thought £23-ish, including delivery, was a really good deal. So then it arrived and it was exactly as the buyer had described it and I was really really happy with it so I can't wait to wear it and just be like nice and cozy in it because it's such a lovely jumper. So luckily I have had two very great experiences there. There was no issues with anything throughout the whole kind of buying process and delivery process. So I was very lucky in the regards that that all went smoothly. So I will just run through a couple of like tips and tricks. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is looking into the pictures. So I'm just going to run through a couple of like the tips and tricks that I sort of look for and do when shopping second hand. So the first thing I'm going to briefly talk about is the images. So normally when I'm shopping, I will look for an item that has got a vast selection of pictures so you can really get a feel for the item. 
because if the seller's only got like one picture on, they might be trying to hide something, they might be kind of trying to hide a mark or something and hope that you don't notice it. So just be cautious, always look for items with lots of pictures, go through them all, zoom in, and make sure you have a really good idea of what you're buying basically. Look out for any marks, if there is something like a little mark or something, maybe ask the seller, just can you clarify what that mark is? Do you think it will wash out? Can you send me a closer picture of it? If you are worried. I would also look out for good lighting with an image because I feel as though if somebody's gone through the length of having a really good image, really good lighting, then there's a good chance that they are going to be a good trusted seller. And as well as that, having good lighting then allows you to be able to see the colours correctly because there's nothing worse than buying something online, receiving it and then it just looking a completely different colour. I also think before you start your search, make sure to do your research, make sure to know exactly what it is you want because I think it would be pretty hard just to jump on eBay, randomly scroll through a load of clothes with like no sort of aim as to what you're looking for. Definitely narrow it down and know what it is that you want. So I've also got here that it's, it's a very good idea to know the original price, know what you can buy it from online or in store, and also check that the store doesn't still have it but they've popped it in the sale, because you don't want to buy something on eBay that ends up being more expensive than what it is still online, like if they popped into the sale and you haven't noticed, because obviously you would probably prefer to buy it new than a, someone that's selling it for just the same price that's maybe second hand. So do just be cautious, make sure you're aware of the pricing and yeah, just be kind of switched on with things like that. Another thing with pricing is always check the delivery price. So for example, if the seller is using Royal Mail and for some reason they've got like five pound delivery on just a t-shirt, make sure you check the pricing on the Royal Mail website. You can go on and you can see the kind of price that maybe like a small parcel would be. So for example, I kind of, having done my research, I know that maybe jump, like it's just a jumper or just a top, maybe like a small pair of shoes, nothing heavy or nothing too big, would come under a small parcel. And I'm pretty sure that a second hand parcel, uh, sorry, a second class small parcel is about £3.10 and first class for a small parcel I believe is around £3.70. Don't quote me on that but obviously I'm pretty sure that's the sort of pricing. So yeah you don't want to be buying like a £3 top and then paying like £6 delivery because that just isn't fair. Obviously the seller is making money on the delivery. So yeah do just be cautious. Don't see a top that's been listed for like 99p and then has £6 delivery because you're not really paying six, uh, sorry, 99p for the top. You're paying at £6.99 if that makes sense and that isn't realistic because that isn't how much that it would cost to send the t-shirt so hopefully that makes sense um obviously if you are shopping something heavier like a really heavy dress for example or like a heavy pair of boots the seller might then make the shipping a bit more expensive but obviously it would be more expensive to send because it's heavier it's bigger so yeah um, you probably will find yourself covering the cost of that a bit more. And equally, if you find an item that's got free delivery, but then you're thinking, actually, that item looks a little bit pricey, the buyer has probably included the price in their sale. So just kind of bear in mind that and just kind of think into the cost of the seller. Um, so yeah, that's just another good thing to look for. And I would also say that if you've seen an item that you like and you're not sure whether that's a good price for it, maybe just keep scrolling and look at what other people are selling that item for because it would just give you a really good sort of guideline as to whether the one that you're interested in is at selling at a good price, is it overpriced, is it underpriced, are you getting a reasonable deal compared to what other people are selling similar items for. And another thing that I would say is to always be cautious on the item that you're buying, like is it real or is it fake? And I don't mean just with like designer goods. I personally have never bought anything secondhand designer. I'm not really get, going to get into that because I don't know that much about that. Um, but for example, I've often seen people selling lots, like a bulk of Topshop coats and they often look like they are literally the same as a Topshop coat, but they might be a dupe. So do just be careful that you're, what you're buying is authentic and is exactly what you want. Because I have seen a few people recently selling items, they will say like Topshop coat, but then it will be the same style as a Topshop coat. So make sure to go on, do your research, look at the labels, and know that exactly what you're buying is correct. I would also say to be cautious of somebody selling a bulk of items. For example, a Topshop coat. If somebody has that coat, 
in every single size and they have like five of them just be cautious it might be dodgy it might not but it's very unlikely that somebody's going to have that many of an item and it be legit if that makes sense um whereas if somebody's just got one item they're a regular seller and you feel as though you can trust them a bit more you feel as though it's like a relatable sale um, but then that might be a better one to go for. And one thing that I cannot stress enough is always look at the seller's feedback. Look if they've been selling recently, look and just check that you feel as though you can trust the seller. Check that they've got good delivery feedback, just check that they've got good feedback in general because if there's some kind of telltale signs of a bad seller, I would just stay clear because you don't want any hassle, you don't want anything, like you don't want any trouble with your purchase. And another thing, just going back to the pictures, is you can always ask the seller questions. You can always ask them to upload more pictures because you can upload quite a few pictures on eBay. I don't know the exact number, but it's definitely more than just like two or three. And if they haven't used their sort of um, listing to its full potential, you can always ask, could you possibly just upload X, Y, Z picture of whatever it is you want to see. If you're shopping a bag and you want to see a closer detail of the class, then ask for it. You're the buyer, you're going to be handing over your money, so you need to make sure that you're happy with the purchase. So when it comes to searching an item, I try not to be too sort of refined with what I'm looking for. Obviously, if I'm looking for a Topshop coat, then I would have searched Topshop coat, but I would be careful as to say what size. For example, if you put black Topshop coat, size 10, um, that's a very limited search because if somebody hasn't labeled the color or for some reason they haven't labeled the size on the listing, there might, there's a big chunk of items there that aren't going to be shown to you. So maybe just search through Topshop Co to start with, just see if there's any that you like. If you can't find what you're looking for, then obviously you can then go in and refine it. But do just be careful not to sort of refine your search too much purely because, as I said, if the seller hasn't labeled the color and you put black coat, something that is a black coat that hasn't been listed as a black coat might not come up, if that makes any sense. So another really good tip slash trick for eBay is if you come across an item that you're going to have to bid on, try and look for ones that either finish really early in the morning or really late at night because the chance of people actually bidding on that item is probably going to be lower than if it sort of ends, I don't know, like nine o'clock in the morning, four o'clock at night or five o'clock in the evening, maybe when people are online a bit more, try and get them kind of niche times where you don't think people are going to be shopping because you're going to stand a much bigger chance of actually winning the item. And another thing with bidding is don't bid when there's like, three hours to go because obviously you're then bidding up the price and then somebody else is probably going to come along bid more so wait literally till the last few seconds last few minutes um put your price in and kind of hope for the best there's no point in bidding too early because you just need to be in there quick at the end if that makes sense so yeah bid let very last second put your kind of maximum bid in and just hope for the best but one thing I would say is don't ever let a bidding war make you go past your budget. Know your budget, stick to it. If it goes over, walk away because there's no point in kind of being in the heat of the moment, bidding more and more and more and then actually you've ended up paying like £20 more than what you could have just bought it from the shop for, if that makes sense. So always just be careful, know your budget, know your limits, know what you want to spend. So another thing to do to give yourself a bit of protection when shopping on eBay is always message the seller and ask them to tell you what the product is exactly like. Does it have any faults? Does it have anything wrong with it? Um, like sort of the colour and things like that because if they've messaged you and told you exactly what it is like and it's not like that upon arrival, you can then obviously go to eBay and PayPal and then um, basically get your money back because you have proof that the seller has told you it's this but it hasn't been on arrival. Another thing to check is obviously if you don't smoke, maybe check that the item is not is coming from a smoke-free home. The same for pets, if you have any allergies, you might want to ask the seller just those sort of questions just so you don't get disappointed with the item when it does arrive. So the last thing that I'm going to say, whether it be on Depop or eBay, is always on Depop you can like the item um, so you can find it again and then you, I think you do get updates on whether the buyer has sort of reduced the price or anything. And then equally on eBay, if you've seen an item but you're not 100% sure, always watch it because you can see if anything's changed in the price. You can see if the buyer has relisted it again if it didn't sell the first time. And yeah, you can just find the item quickly and you can kind of keep 
updated with what's going on with it. So I think that is all of the tips and tricks that I have to share with you. It was kind of concentrating a bit there on that video just because I didn't want to miss anything. I feel as though when I edit this back, I'm going to be like, oh, I could have said that, I could have said this. So there might be a part two to this video if there's anything that I've missed out. Um, you can also just send me a message or comment in the description if there's anything else you want to know. But yeah, just kind of overall when it comes to shopping secondhand, you need to tr have trust in the seller. You need to be able to see the product clearly. Don't refine your search too much because you don't want to kind of lose out on seeing other items. And just always look for good quality images. I would say that's kind of the main thing that I look for. Don't go for a product that just looks like it's in a dull, dark environment, that just looks dodgy, that isn't clear. Because it might not be a bad item, but it just doesn't really give you that confidence. Just always look for a nice, crisp, clear image where the seller has completely shown every angle of the item. Um, and then that's probably like the most sort of the best way of finding what you want. But yeah, other than that, I think that's everything. I really hope this video was in some way helpful. Um, as I said, let me know if you have any other questions and best of luck with your secondhand shopping. If you do buy anything secondhand, make sure to tag me over on Instagram. I will pop my handle on the screen because I would really love to see what you've purchased. I find it really exciting actually shopping secondhand because you never know what you're going to find. Um, and yeah, there's some real gems out there. So yeah, make sure to let me know how it goes. Really hope you did enjoy this video. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and I will see you in my next one.